Well, hello and welcome back to my sewing room. Today is Friday, February 26th, 2021. And this is number 14 in my Sew Your Stash series. And I'm gonna show you how to make my 10 inch quick dash block. So this is what the block looks like. This is a traditional churn dash block, sort of. These are more elongated um, normally. So these are done with three and a half inch squares. So normally you would cut this strip three and a half inches wide as well. So it would finish at a nine inch. But I kind of like this one where it's a little bit elongated strips. And I'll show you how we make those strips really quickly. And which is why I call this block my quick dash block. And let's see, I have just a few here that you can see close up. I'm always using my stash for this series, uh, my baskets. If you need to know about my uh, scrappy stash baskets, you can go into my previous videos at the very beginning of this series. And I will also link that when I talk about how I cut and put my scraps in my baskets. I'll put that link to that particular tutorial so that you can you know, get to that quickly without having to search. And then there's another one. These are really fun, and um, I cut these using several of my strip size baskets, and I'll show you how I do that. But the first thing I wanted to show you is talk about my bee backgrounds. So I always use a variety of my bee backgrounds, and I'm always showing you my um, baskets with my colored strips or my prints, but I never show you my basket of my backgrounds and how I keep those. So let me bring, bring that in. It's kind of a big basket, so you're not going to be able to see the whole thing. But this is something that I keep on the shelf in my other closet that is not with, you know, my baskets like, like my scrappy strip ones. And um, I just keep it in random, you know, like I have one yard cuts or two yard cuts or something like that. And even sometimes I'll keep like a stack of squares just kind of at the top so that I know I already have some squares if I need to grab some. But what I do is, you know, I just keep working on them and cutting what I need. And then when I have smaller pieces like this, I just fold them within the biggest piece. So that's how I store those in this basket. And then I just grab my basket out when I need to cut for my backgrounds, which is always. <laughs> so this basket is very handy for me. And then I always go to the smallest pieces first to see if I can use those up. And then those pieces get smaller and smaller. Now, um, because I am the designer of these fabrics, when, like, say, perhaps this print is gone out of my basket, then I will go out to my storage shed. I've got a barn out by the side of the house where I keep my bolts of fabric. And then I'll just cut off another yard of it and put it in here. So, but I can do that because I'm the designer. But obviously, you know, you can do that by... Um, getting any yardage of your back, favorite backgrounds that you like to use, whether they're my B backgrounds or, you know, whoever's backgrounds. It's just nice to have them all in a basket so that you can just grab them and cut what you want to use with the prints in the other baskets. So let's talk about cutting the backgrounds. First, let me move this out of the way. So here are my backgrounds that I have cut, just several different backgrounds for this block. Here's the cutting chart. So I'm gonna hold this right here so that you can see that while I talk about it and I'll try not to put my fingers in front of it. <laughs> so for this background, for this block, you're gonna need one piece A, which is, here, let me grab. So you're gonna need a four and a half inch square you're gonna need four three and a half inch squares. And then you're gonna need one, let me grab that so you can kind of see it. One two inch by 20 or 21 inch piece of fabric. So normally for, for these, when I'm cutting, you know, I have several cut in this print because I need a 20 or 21 inch strip of these. I will cut a two inch by width of fabric and then just cut it in half. So that ends up being about 21. So that's what you need for the backgrounds. For the prints, 
you're going to need for one print, these are for the corners, you're gonna need four three and a half inch squares. So let me um, talk to you about that and what baskets I cut those out of. Okay, let me pull my mat in here so I can cut from, cut from there. Okay, so there's two ways that I can get my um, three and a half inch squares. So here's my three and a half inch. Here's one of them. I have two of my three and a half inch. So you can see that's my three and a half inch strips. And um, so obviously, let's see, I'm going to cut... I need at least, let's see, I need at least 14 inches long on this three and a half inch. So this is a three and a half inch strip. I can tell by my mat here, it's a little less than 18, so I'm gonna have enough of that. So I can double this up if I want. I always have my iron when I'm cutting, so I'm gonna just quickly press this. Just helps to have them a little bit more accurate. So what I do is I grab my three and a half inch square. I have these doubled up. I have my rotary and I simply, I'm cutting two at a time. You can cut them singly if you want, but this is exactly why I like to cut out of my baskets because look at that, I've got four three and a half inch squares, easy peasy because they were already three and a half inches tall. Here's my leftover fold and I can see that I can get another three and a half inch square. So what I'm gonna do is press that, bring it back over here, use my square ruler, trim it, and now I've got an extra three and a half inch square that I will go ahead and put in my three and a half inch square bins. But for right now, I only need four of these. So let me grab a design board and start making this block. And I'm just gonna put that square over there for another time. And I'm gonna grab a background. Okay, so here's a background for one block. So here's my four three and a half inch squares out of one print. Now I need to print for the strips. So, but before I start doing the strips, I wanna show you one more basket that I use my uh, to cut three and a half inch squares, and that's my seven inch basket. Okay, so here's one of my seven inch baskets. Right here, you can see the tag. And so because these are all seven and a half inch wide, and because three and a half plus three and a half measures seven, that means all I have to do is cut a seven inch square out of here. Let's see, I've already done that. Already had some blocks cut. So see this one right here is a seven inch square. I had already cut that from my basket and now easily, so I'm gonna turn my mat over so we can see to cut this square. So all I do with that is I grab another ruler, lay it on the three and a half inch mark and I know that I can get exactly four squares out of this. Do that, you can stack them on top of each other. Now, if you don't have a mat that you can change your, you know, turn over and change your color on, I like to have my mats two-sided just for this instance, but see how close that color is? All I do is I turn my fabric over instead of my mat sometimes, and then that way I can see easier. So then I just grab my ruler. And now, see, I've easily got four three and a half inch squares. So there's another block ready to go. So for my three and a half inch squares, again, I use my three and a half inch basket and my seven inch basket. And I can get both of those um, baskets. I can get all of the squares. Okay, let me just get those out of the way so I can bring in 
my two and a half inch baskets. So here's my two and a half inch baskets. And of course, that's what I cut my two inch by 20 to 21 inch strips. So let me just grab this one. Slide my cutting back in. And grab that again. And so I know that I have, oh, I didn't even measure this, but yeah, I can tell by my mat here is, yeah, this is 20 inches. You need at least 20 inches. So what I do with that is, these are my two and a half inch strip baskets, but like I showed you here, you need it to measure two inches. So all I do with that is fold it that way, grab a ruler. So I'm cutting four layers at once, or you know, if you had a longer ruler handy or whatever, you can only fold it in half and cut two layers. And so now I've got it two inches wide. So just like that, I'm cut for one block. So what I do with the backgrounds is I usually, you know, we'll sit down and cut a bunch of backgrounds just randomly and stack them up inside of each other and have them on a design board. And then I just start cutting strips and squares. Okay, so let's go over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how easy it is to sew the quick dash block together. All right, so today I'm gonna to be sewing with Miss Dolly again. I'm having so much fun sewing with her. Uh, yeah, I am going to be doing, hopefully next month sometime, uh, a whole video on, about all of my featherweights. And so stay tuned for that. And so I just wanted to show you, I've got four blocks cut here. This is how I normally sew. I use my design boards. These are my small ones that I use and I put individual blocks on here, all ready to go. And sometimes when I'm working on a whole quilt or just a few blocks at a time, depending on that's how many I have stacked up. So that's why I have so many small design boards, if you've seen them before over in my windowsill. <laughs> like I do use this many and um, it's really handy to just cut beforehand and spend all that time cutting and then stack them all up and bring them over to my machine. And as I get time, I just grab it and start sewing. And I either like to have the paper or the pattern or the book in front of me here on my um, on my bee's knees book stand. And it holds the design board. Right now it's got one of my cross stitches on it, but I always put the design board over it. And it's just nice to have what I'm sewing right in front of me and the pieces that I need. And um, I have all of this counter space up here. And I can just set things up here and grab them as I need. And then I just have this sewing area, which is plenty for me. Um, some of you asked how I sew like rows on a quilt when I'm doing something large in such a small area. All I have to do is push this countertop right here over against there when I'm sewing. And then I have this whole length of this desk, which is, you know, like... 48 inches, so that's pretty big. So I have plenty of space here to do what I need, but I like this small, cozy space uh, just doing blocks, which is what I do most of the time. So, all right, so let me just grab one of these off the top and let's get started sewing my quick dash blocks. So what you're gonna need to do first is, let's do our strips. Our strips are going to be the segment right here. And it's just faster to sew them in strips together and then trim them into segments when you're doing something like this. So this is one, one of the steps that I take to make this quick. And all I'm going to do is just use an accurate quarter inch seam allowance, which is right here. I have my seam so easy guide taped right here on Miss Dolly with washi tape. Washi tape will not leave a residue. And how I line this up on my any machine, but on my featherweight, is you always line up this center line with the needle. And then because I have grids on here, you can find other lines on the machine that are on straight, like this plate has straight lines. And then I can use this grid once this is lined up to you know go back and forth like this until I know that it's straight here and it's straight here. 
and then I know that this is accurate. So this is your quarter inch seam, and so that's what I'm going to follow right here. I'm just going to go ahead and sew this strip. Okay, so the strip is sewn together, but notice that they're not the same length. You don't have to worry about that. As long as each one is at least 20 inches, you know, then you're going to be good to go. So I'm going to use my little scrappy starters and stoppers here that I only use for filming. So I use these when I'm filming to save on time and thread, but normally when I'm not filming, I have a bonus quilt project going and I'm sewing other little pieces of, you know, uh, quilt blocks, little segments together, such as squares and rectangles, depending on the bonus project that I'm working on. But for filming, I just use scrap fabric. Okay, so here I have my strip. So then I'm gonna take it over here. And I definitely wanna set the seams by just pressing real quick. See how nice and straight that is? It sets those seams in and makes it so it's not so gathery, if that makes sense. <laughs> I know gathery is not a word, but it can be my word, right? And then I go ahead and I just press, making sure it's open all the way as I go. And, and how I do that is I fill beforehand with my fingers and kind of make sure that it's pushed open before the iron gets to it. And I use the side of the iron as well as the point. Okay, so I just press that open, let it cool for a minute, and if you use these clappers, it makes them cool faster too because the point of the clappers is it sucks out the heat because of the wood, the kind of wood it is, it sucks out the heat and uh, quicker, and then your blocks also lie flatter. So that helped cool that off, and now I can go ahead and now these should measure three and a half inches tall, See, these squares are three and a half inches, so you can tell that's three and a half inches tall. And then I need to cut them four and a half inches wide into four and a half inch segments. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna push this kind of out of the way. Pull this over here. Hang on, Cass, let me grab, oh, here's I've got my ruler. So I've got a four and a half inch square ruler and the first thing I'm going to do is just trim off the edges. But I know that the center is going to be right here on this. If you're measuring down, the center is going to be on the one and three quarter inch line. So I just want to square this up on the edge. And then I'll turn it around. So I line it up at the top. This is on the one and three quarter inch right here. See one, two, three, four, three quarters. And then I'm just going to go ahead and cut four of these. Just keep moving on down. Now, typically when I'm doing um, blocks like this, like I will sew all four of these in this whole stack all at once. And so I'll go through and sew all of the strips together. And then I'll do this part, you know, all at the same time. And then just put the segments back up on the board. And that's even faster. But because, again, I'm filming, I'm just going to show you how to construct one block. And then you can chain piece, you know, two at a time, four at a time, eight at a time, whatever you want to do. So I've got these four segments cut right here, which are going to be those. So I'm gonna put it back here on my design board and I'm ready to go, but look at this leftover. Because this one ha happens to have this much leftover, if it has two inches, then I'm gonna cut two inches into it. And then when I have another one, I can make make a checkerboard. So that's what you'd want to cut them is two inches in for those leftovers. I'm going to add this to my little, the top of my little leftovers. I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute when we get to the last part of the block. Okay, so now that we've got all the sections here, this is where I typically will lay out my block just like a nine patch. 
Now I'm going to take these four background three and a half inch squares and set those aside because I'm just going to lay these out right now like this. This goes in the center. This goes like this. This goes like this. And I am not going to make these into half square triangles right now. This is another quick way I do it. And it's not only quicker, but it's more accurate. So I'm going to be sewing this together into a nine patch. Then after it's all done, the block like this, I'm going to take these and add the easy corner triangles to the corners. Now it's more accurate because you're just sewing squares like this. Otherwise you're doing half square triangles and you've got that bulky seam in there in the first place. But with blocks like this, when there are just four corners to add or two corners on the outside, I always do that last instead of doing that first. I hope that doesn't confuse you, but if you're a quilter, you know what I'm talking about if you're an experienced piecer. If you're just beginning to piece, um, that's what this series is for so that, you know, you can just see that there's more than one way to skin a cat, as my grandma used to say. And I just like to simplify things the best way that I can and while saving and using my leftovers and scraps at the same time. So I'm not going to be talking so that I'm not talking over my machine, but I'm going to be sewing this together like three across, three across, three across, and then sewing those three rows together just like a nine patch. And I will show you the back of the block after so you can see how I pressed and um, let's get sewing. Okay, so I've got all four of the easy corner triangles on and I'm going to just give them a quick press even before I trim them. I just find it's easier to press them this way because when I trim them off, I like the fabrics to be set together. Let me let me tell you what I mean. Okay, so these are my these are my sewing scissors, by the way. I don't think I've ever talked about these or showed them, but these are my um, sewing scissors with the longer blades and I just love them so much. So these are Bee and My Bonnet sewing scissors and these are perfect for trimming off these seams. And I like to do it at an approximate quarter inch. And then I'm gonna save these and show you a little bit about those. So I just go ahead and clip these off. Now I always save my leftovers if they are big enough to cut a one and a half inch square. And those are big enough. So let me press this block back first and then we'll talk about that. So now that these are all pressed and the seams are set, excuse me, sewn and the seams are set, then I can go ahead and press them back. 
And then I definitely will put put these on there. They also come in the short length. These are the clappers by Riley Blake. This says the Taylor's clapper on the long one. And this says Quilter's clapper on the short one. They're exactly the same. They're just longer and shorter. So let me let that cool off and I'll, we'll swing back over here, Cass, and talk about these leftovers. So that's what I've got in here is all of my leftovers that I've trimmed off. So there's four of these. And you can see that you can definitely cut, see, a one and a half inch square. Now, if I trimmed great big seams, I wouldn't get a one and a half inch square, but I, you know, I trimmed them quarter inch and I still have a little bit more leeway. And what I do is I trim them both at the same time. I won't show you how, you know, obviously I just put them on a mat and just trim them one quarter. And then I throw these little triangles away because they're too small for me to do anything. And then here's all my little sets of backgrounds and squares that I have trimmed together. And so for one block, I can sew these together into little four patches. So next week is my schedule that I'm gonna film my floss tube. And so I hope you join me for that. But the next week after that, is another um, Sew Your Stash series, and I'll make a block using these. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with these. So if you wanna save your leftovers from the Quick Dash, I've got this falling off here. If you wanna save your leftovers and join me for that, um, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and please hit the like button. That really helps out my channel if you hit the like button and helps me out so I can bring you more content and so what does this look like now that this is cooled off let's grab it I'll just stick it right here for right now but here is a quick dash block right now it measures 10 and a half inches unfinished when you sew it into your quilt it will measure 10 inches Now, when you're sewing them into your quilt, you can simply just sew the blocks together, or you can put sashings in between and a, and a scrappy cornerstone. That would be really fun as well. If I was doing um, cutting sashing, I would cut it um, two inches wide, and then it will finish the same size as this, and the quilt you know, would look kind of cohesive. But I like them just sewn right together, and I also like sashing as well. So you can decide, and you saw on my design wall what the quilt looks like. Well, they're not sewn together, but you saw on my design wall what it would look like sewn together if you did not use sashing. Either way is super cute. It's fun to use your scraps for this as well. This block is such a classic. Um, I, love, I love sewing it in all different ways, but this is um, by far my favorite way because it's so quick, which is why I call it my quick dash block. This block is, can also be very masculine, so it would be fun to just pick your scraps in maybe more masculine colors if you're looking for a quilt to, to sew for, you know, a boy, a baby boy, or for your husband, wouldn't it be fun in all plaids and things like that? So your son, a uh, camping quilt, I don't know, it just, it's such a classic block, it has a lot of possibilities. And so I hope you enjoyed today's series and the quick dash block and I will chat with you later.